The city and county of Broomfield owns millions of dollars worth of water rights. We pump, treat, and store millions of gallons of water every day, and we're responsible for providing safe, pure drinking water for the more than 50,000 residents in the city and county of Broomfield. Water is big business for us, and we take water conservation very seriously. Water conservation is practices, techniques, and technologies that we use to help us use water more efficiently. The City and County of Broomfield received a grant from the Colorado Water Conservation Board to update our water conservation plan. In that planning process, we discovered that we're doing a lot of things to conserve water in our own operations, but we needed to do more to get the word out to our residents so they can help us conserve this valuable resource. The purpose of this video is to showcase some of our water conservation efforts and to show our residents how they can conserve water, cut their water bills, and also reduce stormwater pollution. Water conservation enhances the ability of a water provider like the City and County of Broomfield to meet its water supply needs as well as reduce costs. Water conservation can avoid or reduce the need to acquire expensive water supplies. It can postpone, downsize, or even avoid the costly infrastructure of water and wastewater treatment plants. It can reduce operating costs related to water and wastewater treatment plants. And it can comply to regulations that are associated with water conservation. Our outdoor water use probably accounts for over 80% of our annual water use. One of the things that we can do to save water outside is to do proper landscaping for our semi-arid environment in Colorado. Most people assume that Colorado has all the water it will ever need. The fact is Colorado uh, is in a semi-arid to arid environment and only receives 17 to 16 inches of, of precipitation in the year. If you compare this to Omaha, Nebraska that gets 30 inches a year or the state of Alabama that gets 60 inches a year or even the Mojave Desert that gets 7 inches a year, you can actually see how dry we really are here. Landscaping in Colorado in our semi-arid environment requires the use of xeric or low water use plants. Ziri comes from a Greek word meaning dry. By following the seven principles of xeriscaping, you'll have a low water using, beautiful garden, and it also saves you maintenance, time, and money. The first principle, and the most important principle of xeriscaping, is to plan ahead. You need to come up with a design for your landscape. The landscape design process is an interesting process. I call it the age system. Assessment, goal setting, and execution. The first step is assessment, and you need to take a sheet of graph paper. Measure your property, and put your house boundaries, everything that is physical. The next step is goal setting. I'm sure you've seen all sorts of pictures in magazines or other people's property that you'd like to incorporate into your property. So start setting those goals. Now the fun begins. We've got the actual plan that we're going to create. Step three, the execution. I'm here today to talk about choosing a landscape contractor. First, decide what services you want a contractor to perform and what services you want to do yourself. Second, whenever you're hiring a contractor, make sure you contact the building division to find out what permits or licenses are required for a contractor to do the work. By obtaining the right permits, you're going to make sure that the most essential parts of the project are installed correctly and to code. Once you find a group of licensed contractors, solicit bids from several of them. I would recommend at least three. If you do all these upfront steps, you will greatly increase your chances of having a successful project and also getting a good value. The second principle is to improve the soil. Soils in Broomfield are typically heavy clay soils and they need to be improved before you can do anything in your garden. In the Broomfield area predominantly we have really clay soils so it's really important to amend the soil with the compost so that you loosen up the clay and allow for water holding capacity and also assist in the compaction of the soil. So five cubic yards per thousand actually works out to a depth of about two inches that you put it over the uh, undisturbed soil. Next is what we're going to do is come in and we're going to till these areas. The optimum is six to eight inches that you want to till these amendments in and go over it a couple times so you get a really nice mixture of the amendments in the natural soil. This is actually taking the soil 
and churning it up, breaking up the clods or the clay and mixing it with the organic material. Okay, so now we've basically prepared our seed bed or sod bed, and so now we're gonna put the final grade on it and uh, to either seed it or sod it. The third principle of xeriscaping is to irrigate properly. You need to have a well thought out and designed irrigation system or you won't save any water in the long run. One of the more efficient irrigation systems is a drip irrigation system. It's good for small irrigated areas. You can save up to 60% on water usage. It's 95% of the water actually goes to the plant. The reason being that it can be so efficient is because what you're doing is you're taking emitters and you're bringing them right to the point of water that you want to put water at. This emitter is a point that comes right to these plants here, so the water is used right here at these plants instead of over spraying with conventional spray. The other thing that we can do with drip emitters is you have you put the emitter into your tube and then you bring quarter inch tube and you can bring it over to the plants wherever you need it at. This is another type of drip irrigation that the City and County of Broomfield have been using. This is called Netifen. Netifen is a type of pipe that has drip emitters either every 12 inches or every 16 inches. This is water efficient. As you see, you've got these drip emitters. For overspray, you would have to spray the whole thing. You'd have runoff and everything. This is still bringing the water right to the plantings. Some uh, practices that you want to try to avoid is uh, watering in the heat of the day. The best times to water your system, late evening and before early morning through the night. In Broomfield, we're real conscious about saving water with our annual beds and our perennial beds. This is the newest idea we've come up with, is the self-watering planters. These planters hold about 25 gallons of water in a reservoir down here, and inside they have a wick that absorbs the water. They're watered about once a week, which saves about 50% of our watering needs on these plants. The fourth zero escape principle is to limit turf areas. There are a lot of alternatives to turf, and you really should use it sparingly in your landscape. We're now here at the championship field at uh, City and County Roomfield Commons Park. It is a synthetic turf field. The infill product uh, in the field is actually pure rubber. There's right around 10,000 tires that are ground up and put into this field. We save just under a million gallons a year by not watering, uh, irrigating the 2.4 acres of synthetic turf that you see behind us. There are alternatives to Kentucky bluegrass. Here we're looking at a buffalo grass, and a buffalo grass, although it will go dormant during the heat of the summer, does not require any additional watering other than what Mother Nature gives it. This is another variety of alternate grasses. This is actually a Canadian bluegrass. It takes approximately about a third of the moisture that uh, regular Kentucky bluegrass takes, so it's also another alternative. The fifth xeriscape principle is to select appropriate plants. You need to learn how to zone your plants together that have similar water and sunlight needs. Welcome to the Broomfield Xeric Demonstration Garden. This is a cooperative effort between the City of Broomfield and the Colorado State University Master Gardeners. The garden was designed by Colorado State Master Gardeners using plant select materials to demonstrate how you can have a beautiful garden at home plants that are reliable in the Rocky Mountain area that take very little water. Most of the plants selected are plant select plants. This is a program that is a cooperative effort between CSU and the Denver Botanic Gardens to find and distribute plants which are reliable in the Rocky Mountain area. So let's go take a look at the different things we have here. The Zara Garden is divided into other little mini gardens so that we can group plants together and show you how you can arrange them as well as different aspects of plants. This one is the border garden. A great border plant is yarrow. Yarrow is a very xeric plant, does not take a great deal of water. Perfect plant, either in the background or in the middle of your garden. This is grandma's garden, your good old fashioned plant that your grandma probably had and you grew up with. This is a daylily beautiful mainstay in any garden. This will start blooming and blooming now through fall. Hey, when you come visit the gardens, don't miss the sensory garden. The sensory garden is named that because of the senses that you can get out of it. We have chocolate flower, which when you smell it, it truly smells like chocolate. You're gonna go right after candy. Very xeric, very, very fragrant. Another plant we have in the sensory garden is lavender. Lavender is an old fashioned plant. It's actually an herb 
beautiful scent to it. You can pick the stalks, wrap them together, put them in the house, and they'll scent a room for six months. When choosing the plant material for Broomfield, we try to choose plant materials that are low water use, and we go by a system called the triple X plants or double X or single X plant material. A single X requires a little bit more water, double X less, and triple X requires almost nothing. This is the triple X rated garden meaning that it takes very little water. It's right next to the street where it gets a lot of heat next to the concrete, increased heat, gets very little water. These plants are doing beautifully. Here we have Rocky Mountain Penstemon, a very feathery flower. It will spread, fill in like a ground cover. This is Jupiter's Beard. It comes in white. You can also find it in pink. Wine cups, triple X rated flower. As you can see, it will get full and lush. It will fill in any dry spot that you have trouble watering. An area where the grass is always brown, dig it up, put in wine cups. It will cover the ground and you won't have to waste the water on it. A beautiful companion plant is Russian sage. Russian sage, you see a great deal in public gardens because again, it takes very little water. It will bloom from midsummer through the fall. You can actually have roses in a triple X rated garden. These are shrub roses. Again, very low water requirements. They'll start to bloom midsummer, go through fall. So your X-rated garden can be full of color all summer long with very little water needed. Another type of yarrow, another color of yarrow, this one blooms red. Starts out a little mustardy looking, but it will turn red, much like the yellow one we just saw, and it will bloom until fall. When people think of annual color or color for their flower beds, they usually think of annual flowers. In this bed, we've combined the annuals and the perennials to extend the length of the time period the bed is blooming. We've used the daisy, the Shasta daisy, and Russian sage, and just a variety of perennials in here. It makes for a really nice, colorful bed. The sixth Xeriscape principle is to use mulch. Mulch helps hold the much needed moisture into the soil. I'm here to talk to you about the mulches in the landscape. There are several different options that you can use. Uh, mulching is beneficial uh, for the fact that it helps retain moisture into your plants. It helps you with aesthetics. It helps in weed control. It keeps weeds from uh, germinating. It also uh, keeps your soil temperatures from fluctuating from the heat of the day to the cool of the night. It keeps them pretty even. One of our options here is rock mulch. You can use that in, in pretty much any different areas. One of the things you need to be aware of is that rock mulch does hold heat and it also has a glare and reflects up. Uh, so you need to use that in uh, areas where plants can handle that extra heat. River rock comes in smaller sizes, uh, multiple of colors from pretty much a plain look to red to gray. You can get cobble, which is going to be bigger, and you can get some uh, pretty good sized six to eight inch ones too to put in uh, shrub beds and change the texture of your shrub beds uh, just by the type of rock that you pick out. One of the other options is bark mulch. It comes in many different sizes colors and adds a lot to your landscaping. You can use it in many different colors and shades and custom your yard to how you want it to look. One of the other benefits of mulch is especially wood mulch. Um, as it breaks down into the soil it helps amend the soil, gives you some fertility and so forth and so it's, it's got added benefits uh, not only for aesthetics and water retention but over the time as it uh, breaks down it's great for the soil as well. One of the other options as far as mulch goes is rubber mulch. It is made locally. It's made out of recycled tires. It looks just like your wood mulch and uh, it's saving two things at once. It's uh, using recycled tires to keep them out of landfill and provides a beautiful look for your lawn and garden. The seventh Xeriscape principle is to maintain your new beautiful Xeriscape garden. Oftentimes when people think of Xeriscape gardens, they think of no maintenance, but there's always maintenance involved with any garden. There's deadheading, trimming, pruning. We've got a Stella Dior Laura lily, and we're just going to trim it back a little bit. It's a deadheading. Helps clean them up and helps force some of the other blooms like these will pop out. It just makes it look more attractive. Under here, you get a little bit of dieback on the leaves, and you can just clean that up by pulling them loose. Okay, we just want to shear off these a little bit. Rather than taking off each bloom, it would take too much time. But you can shear this off like this and it'll force a little bit more bloom out of the plant. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to kind of prepare this area for planting. We need to replace a few grasses that are in this area. What we're doing now is adding compost to the top of this bed. It's pretty thick, heavy clay. 
and we're trying to improve the soil a little bit. We add about an inch to two inches, and then we're gonna rototill it into about six to eight inches. Because this is a little bit of a wet area, we're gonna grade the soil so it crowns a little bit on the top, creates a little bit more drainage, so you have a healthier root system for the plants. I've got the plants all laid out, how we're gonna put them. Now we're gonna dig a hole and start putting them in. Okay, what we're doing is digging the hole. We wanna dig it so that the root system of the plant is about even with the existing soil level. We wanna slope it so that there's drainage. The top of the root ball of your plant, you want about level with the soil level. But in this case, because we have poor drainage in this area, we're trying to crest the hill so the water runs off a little bit. After this is all planted and in, what we're gonna do is put mulch around them to help hold down the moisture and keep the weeds out. And then we'll have them hand watered in. There are several tips to give you on how to keep your lawn and your turf uh, in a healthy state. Aeration, it pulls plugs out of the ground. It allows water, nutrients, and air to get to the roots of the plant. And it also breaks up our hard Colorado clay soil and gives those roots a chance to spread and get thicker. You don't need to water as much, so you're saving water and you have a much healthier turf. One of the other things is mowing height. Uh, there's called the one-third rule. You never want to cut off more than one-third of the plant at one time. Otherwise, you're stressing out the plants and they kind of go into a shock and then that leaves you in the chances for diseases and pests to come in. Use a sharp mower blade. One of the things you want to do there is make sure that uh, you're not running with a dull blade as that tears the grass as opposed to cutting it. What that does is it leaves a brown tip so it gives a brown hue to your lawn and it also gives a way for diseases and insects uh, to invade. Leave your clippings on the ground. If you think about your grass blade, it's mostly water. So if you're bagging your clippings, you're taking away moisture, you're taking away the nutrients after you fertilize, it, that gets soaked up into the plant. If you cut those off and haul them away, you're just taking away uh, your nutrients. Uh, so use a mulching mower or a mulching blade on your current mower and keep those uh, grass clippings on the ground and that would be a huge benefit. One other thing that you, to uh, help promote a healthy lawn is fertilization. A minimum of two times a year is preferable, once in the spring, one in the fall. With so much information to consider about water conservation and xeriscaping, it's no wonder that you might have questions. One of the first places you might consider asking questions are to the Colorado State University Extension Master Gardeners. The Master Gardeners are available in the office two days a week to answer your gardening questions, but they also have a helpline, which is available 24 hours a day for you to record a question. And that phone number is 303-464-5554. One of the best benefits of xeriscaping is just getting out and working in the garden. Digging in the dirt, planting flowers, slowing down, taking time. Just being outdoors sometimes takes away the worries of the day and it can be a good stress reliever for us in our busy lives. I'm very passionate about water conservation. All living things depend on water to survive. We all need to do what we can to preserve and protect this limited, valuable resource so that it will be available for future generations.